The first problem reads, an electroscope is made with two 28 gram balls that hang from 60 centimeter long wires from the same point. When the electroscope is touched with a charged rod, each wire then makes an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the vertical. A, what is the tension in each wire? And B, what is the charge on each ball? Let's take a look at our electroscope. We have two conducting balls hanging from wires from a metal knob. The balls are usually encased in a glass container. We're told that if the knob is touched with a charged rod, say a positively charged rod, then charge is transferred to the knob, down the wires to the balls, and the balls repel one another. We are told that each of the balls has a mass of 28 grams. The angle that the wires make with the vertical is 30 degrees and that the length of each wire is 60 centimeters. The first question is what is the tension let's call it T, in each of the wires. And secondly, what is the charge Q on each of the balls? Each of the balls will have an equal charge Q. What is that charge? All right, that is our problem. Why don't you try to solve that problem before watching its solution. I have drawn a figure listing the data given, and I've also drawn an XY coordinate axis centered on one of our charges, Q, and indicated that the angle between the wire and the X axis is 60 degrees. We approach this problem through Newton's second law of motion. Remember that that says that the sum of the forces acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. Our first task then is to draw all of the forces acting on these charges. We focus our attention on the charge on the right and write that there is a force its weight acting downwards equal to its mass times the acceleration of gravity. There is a tension in the wire, which we can call T, which acts along the wire. There is also an electric force acting on the charge, the repulsive force due to the other charge, which acts along a line between their centers along the x-axis. We'll call that force F sub E. It is a Coulomb force, and we will eventually use Coulomb's law to express it. For the time being, leave it as F sub E. I'm also going to break the tension T up into its X and Y components. This would have a Y component equal to T times the sine of 60 degrees and would have an X component which we can write as T times the cosine of 60 degrees. And then rewrite Newton's second law for both the X and Y direction. For the Y direction, we would write the sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. There is no acceleration in the y direction, so that sum is equal to zero. Also in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the x direction must also be equal to zero because there is no acceleration in the x direction. Let's our, apply our force in the y direction first. Looking at the forces in the y direction, we have upwards T sine 60 degrees, and downwards we have the weight mg, and we will use the convention that downwards is negative, so that's minus mg. This must be equal to zero. 
If I then solve for t, let's see what we would find. t then is equal to mg divided by the sine of 60 degrees. We can evaluate that because we do know m. It is 28 grams. I'm going to change that to kilograms. That's 0 0.028 kilograms. Multiply that by the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second per second. And divide all this by sine of 60 degrees, which is 0.866. And for this, we get value 0.317 newtons, rounded to three significant figures. I'm assuming that all our data are accurate to three significant figures, whether stated or otherwise. That's our answer to part A. Let's take a look at um, our second equation that we can write in the x direction to see if we can find the charge Q which were asked for in part B. In the x direction, we would write the sum of the forces in the x direction. We have to the right, F sub E, and to the left, we have T cosine of 60 degrees. That would be negative since it is to the left. This is equal to zero. F sub E, we can express by means of Coulomb's law. It would be equal to K, the Coulomb constant, times the product of the charges, Q times Q prime. The two charges are exactly the same, so that's just Q squared. This is divided by the distance between their centers, R squared. Let's take a look at R. The value for R here we can find by examining this triangle that we have. There's a 60 degree angle here. 30 plus 30 makes 60 up here, so the third angle must be 60 degrees. This then is an equilateral triangle, so all sides have the same value, so R must be also 60 centimeters. So we do know a value for R, that's 60 centimeters. Let's take this expression, substitute it in, and we would have k times q squared divided by r squared, then putting the t cosine 60 degrees over on the right, t cosine 60 degrees. We're looking for the value of q. So if we solve for q squared, First, Q squared then is equal to T times the cosine of 60 degrees multiplied by R squared and then divided by the Coulomb constant K. All right, let's put our values in for this. We'll get a little more room and write that Q squared then is equal to T, which is 0.317 newtons. Multiply by the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 0.5. Multiply by R squared, which is 0.6 meters, 60 centimeters is 0.6 meters squared. Divide this by the constant K, which is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth newtons times meters squared per coulomb squared. If you work that out, you'll find that this comes out to be 6.34 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared. And to find Q, we must take the square root of that and the square root of that, again, around it to three significant figures is 2.52 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, which can also be expressed as 2.52 microcoulombs, 
a common unit in these problems that we're doing, the microcoulomb. All right, that is the answer then to part B. So we have completely solved our problem. Let us move on then to our next problem.